Welcome back to the next Organo Metallic video. In this one, we're going to be covering the Suzuki reaction. All right. So this reaction will use um, triple bond chemistry. It's not going to be as um, in depth as it was last semester. Mainly, just we only use triple bonds, these alkynes, just to make our initial reagents. All right. And so let's get started. So this reaction is going to be very similar to the Heck reaction. All right. But the difference is the Heck reaction created the trans isomer. In this case, for the Suzuki reaction, the new bonds that you're forming, all the, all the double bonds, right, that existed on the reagents and that are going to exist on the products, retain their stereo count. So if they were cis in the reactants, they're going to be cis in the products. All right. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is just the general um, roadmap almost. All right. So. The Suzuki reaction needs these boron compounds, these um, boronic acid compounds. So I'm going to put a B. Let me just change the color, actually. So I have my boron connected to some sort of R group. All right. Now, the R group, what is this going to be? So R can either be a vinyl group or an aryl boronic acid. So vinyl boronic acid or an aryl boronic acid. All right. Now attached to that boron, we have these groups that I'm just going to label as Y. All right. You'll see what they are in a sec. Um, and they're not too important for this general roadmap. And now what do, what do we react it with? So we're going to react it again with some sort of R group, and I'll explain what that is in a second, onto a halogen. Now the green R group, this is going to be a vinyl or aryl halide, or we can even use a triflate. Remember from the heck reaction what a triflate is? And so we can use any of those. And we're going to react it with, again, some sort of palladium compound. I'm just going to write PDL4. OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to just connect those two R groups. Oh, sorry. Like this. And the side product is just going to be boron onto those two uh, Y groups. And now it's going to be bound to that X, that halogen. OK? And so that's the general idea. It's very similar to the Heck reaction in terms of the products it creates. The only difference really is this starting compound and um, also the stereochemistry is slightly different. OK? So the very first thing, how do we create this boronic acid compound? All right? So um, usually the way we do it is through hydroboration of an alkyne. And so let's use this example here. You have a benzene. And I drew here a terminal alkyne. Remember how the way we count carbons and alkynes. This is one carbon, second carbon. And because I showed that hydrogen coming off, it tells me this is terminal. All right. And actually, I'll leave that on there. So we have this triple bond, this alkyne, all right? So now we can do this hydrobration. We can do it essentially three ways, OK? So the first reagent I, I can use is this. So uh, this is just a weird compound in terms of the way you, you're seeing it written. The way we call it is disiamoborane. All right, the name isn't too important, obviously. But what it's going to do is it just changes that triple bond to a double bond. All right. So you see I have a double bond now. Let me count my carbons just so I can make it very clear. Let's call the carbon one, two, three. Carbon one, two, three. All right, so that two, three triple bond became a two, three double bond. And what I have here is boron down to this group, SIA group, 
the cyamyl, and that two is still there. Okay, so we have this group. So we could use that in the reaction of the um, the Suzuki reaction. So what I have here can put them right there. Okay, so that's one thing I could do. The other version is this. So I put boron with the this OC3 group, and I'll put three of them. All right. So this again is another compound we can use. And what the product is going to be is it's going to be this. Again, that double bond changes here. So it's number again, one, two, three. Two, three double bond is right there. Boron is going to be bound here. And we have two OCH3 groups now. I'll draw them right there. All right, and you could have abbreviated it so it looks like this. You got boron OCH3, two. That would have worked as well. You don't have to draw the full structures. And the next step after this is all we would do is just add H+. And we would turn this compound into this boron OH OH and we have our boronic acid all right that's the second pathway we can do it the last pathway this one is just going to be called the name of the compound is catechol borane all right, so you just write this over the arrow, and we're going to get this compound that does that looks really weird. Let's just number the carbons again. One, two, three. So I'm going to have my boron, and I'm going to have this weird-looking ring. All right, so it's going to be this ring, and we also have a benzene bound to it. And we can use that in our reaction, with, in the Suzuki reaction. So these reagents are the three that we would use. We can also do this stuff with Grignards or lithium reagents, right? So if I have, say this, MGBR, right? You can again add this BOCH3, three, three of them. And what we would get is this compound. Let's actually number our carbons first. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boron binds to carbon three. OCH3. OCH3, then we add the H plus again, and we get our boronic acid. All right, so how would we do this with the lithiums? Very similar. So you'd have a lithium right here. And again, and just to save space, instead of doing two separate writing at two separate steps, I'll just go like this. To indicate that it happens, you know, one step after the other. And we can go straight to our product. Boron, two OHs. All right, so when I do um, Suzuki, I feel like it's probably just easiest to stick with this middle area right here, like this whole, these middle reagents. Uh, they're probably just the simplest rather than, because it just gets annoying to write it out, catechol, borane, or this guy. So on a synthesis, I just stick with this right here, All right? And we get our boronic acid. Now that we have that, let's try an example of the Suzuki reaction. So I'm going to skip straight ahead to actual 
boronic acid compound. So we don't have to go through making it again. We've just seen that. So here's our boronic acid compound. Now, the R group, what's bound to the boron is a vinyl aryl boronic acid. In this case, it's vinyl. And now we need to react it with that green R group bound to halogen. Now this can be a vinyl or aryl halide or a triflate. All right, so let's just do a vinyl halide. Keep things simple. Okay, so here it is. Now let's number our carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the Suzuki reaction always retains your stereochem. Okay, so what I just find it's easiest to do is draw one of those chains exactly how you already have it. So on the left, I'm gonna just draw like the five carbon chain. Okay, let's renumber. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and my double bond is on carbon four and five. Let's put that there. Now, five is gonna to connect to carbon six, right? If we look at our general mechanism here, the R group is bound directly to the boron and then it binds to the green R group. So we gotta bind the carbon directly bound to the boron to the carbon of the halide. That's carbon six. So five is gonna to bind to six, but you must retain the stereochem. So let's take a look. On this compound, if I split the double bond, right? So let's look on the left side, which is this area. What's gonna happen is, let me erase the four, move it over. I have a hydrogen coming out over here. And if you look on the, on the right side, I have a hydrogen coming down there. So on the left, my carbon chain is going downward. That's the higher priority. On the right, my highest priority is that boron. It's coming upwards. So since the two highest priority groups are on opposite sides, this is trans, all right? Now let's look at this compound here. You can see if we split the double bond, I have hydrogens here. On the left-hand side, the boron is my highest priority. He's coming down. On the right-hand side, this carbon, carbon eight is my highest priority. He's coming downward too. So they're on the same side of the double bond. Therefore, this is cis. So I need to maintain that four or five double bond on this compound to be trans. And over here, we need that six and seven double bond to be cis. So if I'm gonna make this trans, if this is carbon five, you need to have this come up. It's carbon six. Six is bound to seven. Right, and that's going to be where my other double bond is going to be. Now, remember this uh, six seven double bond is cis, right? So, I have the choice of making it like this now carbon eight over there, or to put him down here. In order to keep him cis, you're going to need to put him downwards. All right, because if I split this double bond, the methyl is my highest priority on the right, and the rest of the chain over there, both on the same side of the double bond, and therefore it's cis. Okay, so that's another, um, so that's an example of how we would go through the Suzuki reaction. All right, hopefully it's pretty simple, not too bad. Okay, um, so an example of how we would do it with the triflates, because I said we can do that too. Remember the way we make a triflate is like this. Take this ketone, TF2O over pyridine. You get this. Okay. So now Let's put our boron compound, let's just use this one. Mm. 
and let's number one, two, three, four, five. Five is going to bind to the carbon of that um, leaving group, right? Instead of a halide, we have a triphoid now. It's this carbon, so that's going to be carbon six. Let's call it the seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, if you guys remember in the Heck reaction, we had this weird rearrangement, right? Because of that beta hydride elimination. The Suzuki reaction does not have this problem. So you're not going to get a weird shifted looking product. If we did this with the Heck reaction, right, using a six membered ring, and if we didn't use a triflate, right, we usually get something like this. Remember, this is if we did not use a triflate. Whereas we expected something like this. Right, we could avoid that in heck reaction using a triflate. All right, now so in this case, we use the triflate, we can now directly bind exactly how we would normally do it. Oh my god! So if I number my carbons again, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to bind 5 to 6. 6, 7 had that double bond still. And if you look at that 4 or 5 double bond, it's trans. So you have to make him trans. Let's just count our carbons. 5, 4, 3, 2. One extra carbon left. Let me move this over. So that's going to, and carbon is carbon 1. And I still have that double bond on 4 and 5 right there. And if you look, we were able to put them trans. All right. So we could have easily do like this as well, or you could have done the heck reaction using the, the uh, triflate. Either one gives you the same product, all right? If we go down this triflate road. Hopefully this video made sense. If you, again, if you're having any trouble, please feel free to email me or go on to the CLC. All right. And I'll see you guys in the next video.